What's up everybody, it's your boy Kilo Loco, and today we're going to be going over protocol extensions. Now protocols are very powerful and, and that's why Apple is saying that Swift is actually a protocol oriented language. Now um, a lot of the power lies in the extensions because essentially what it does, it gives you the concept of inheritance but with other objects, not just classes. So that means that you can have structs, classes, and enums all conform to the same protocol. You can extend the functionality of what those methods do or even change some of the properties that are on them. Now, this is extremely important to understand because this is where all the power lies and that's what we're gonna go over right now. So let's get into it. We in a playground today. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take the concept that you that you might be more familiar with, which is working with buttons, you know, labels, um, you know, text fields, things like that. And the way that I want to demonstrate the power of protocol extensions to you is by actually showing you like a real world example. And that would be like um, having some type of method that would be useful on all these different types of objects like on your labels and your buttons and your text fields so let's get into it right now now the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a button class that kind of represents a UI button but it's not going to be an actual UI button but we're, we're just going to create a button class so let's go ahead and do that real quick all right so my button would you know theoretically it'd be of type ui button but we're not going to get all the way into that um today we're just going to go with the basic example now the other thing that we would want to create is um a label just so that we can you know kind of compare both of these two but the label what the way that i'm going to make it is i'm going to actually make it a struct just so that you guys can see that uh, protocols can be used on both classes and structs which I covered in the last video but I just want to make it very clear and transparent that you can use this with structs too all right so now we have a button and a label now you would obviously have all the functionality that makes your button special and all the functionality that would make your label special but what we want to do is we want to have both of these objects have a method that's called color changeable because maybe we just want to change the background color or maybe we want to change the text color or something like that right we just want to change the color so if we were to actually create a, pro a protocol and we called this um, color changeable as we can see right here um, it doesn't currently have any methods or anything like that, but it could essentially make both of these conform to color changeable. Once again, I, I covered all this in the basics um, in the last video. So obviously both of these can conform because there's no real requirements um, through this protocol right here called color changeable. As soon as we add like a method or a property to it, we would have to update um, both of those objects with the proper implementation of color changeable, the, um, the, the protocol. So let's go ahead and add um, a, a method that's called color uh, change color. All right, so as expected, we get the red lines, right? So what we would have to do is we could either, you know, type it in ourselves or we could let Xcode, Xcode do all that hard work for us, hell yeah. And um, what we're gonna do is we would obviously say, well, let's say my button, we want and the change color method for my button is going to just change the the color to white so let's just you know we're not even going to do anything we're just going to say print print changing to white right and we want to do the same exact thing for the label we just want to change it to to white so we would obviously implement the actual functionality here but we're just doing the prints so um so we just got a changing to white right now Obviously, you don't want to do something like this because then you got all these different methods. Like, what if we wanted to add another one down here, right? So let's say this one was also a class, and um, we're going to actually make this one just a view, and we'll just call it my view, right? And we're going to say, oh, it's color changeable, like so. And then now we have to implement the whole entire change color functionality, right? And this is just one method. I mean, could you imagine if we had to do um, all, all kinds of different methods? Like that would be super annoying to have to go through and do each one of these, like implement the same functionality. So once again, changing to white, right? So that's super annoying. Code smell, it stinks. 
rotten cheese, all this other stuff. So let's go ahead and show how extensions are actually useful in this case. So what we would do is we would just do an extension on our protocol and we just say color changeable and we're extending it. Now it's not gonna give you um, the autocomplete in an extension, but you could just copy it right here because that is the function signature. It has to be um, typed out exactly like that. Um, I mean, you could go ahead and you know freehand it if you want, I like copying. But um, yeah, all we would wanna do is we would want to implement the default functionality in here. So what this kind of does is it, it kind of um, makes it like, optional it's not it's not an optional function it already has implementation but it kind of makes it optional because essentially the the actual implementation is optional it's up to you if you want to actually implement uh, this function and or this method and its functionality into each of those classes that conform to that protocol so um, let me show you what that means exactly what that means so changing to white right what, what each of our other objects was doing Right, but now what we can do is we can go ahead and delete each of these um, different functionalities, right, or diff each of these different methods, because all of them are changing to white. But we already have default default functionality for the change colored method. So if we were to actually use any of these objects, so let's say my button, let um, my button equals my button and we were to say my button my button dot change color as you can see when we run it we have changing to white and there's no functionality implemented in the my button anymore because it's already part of the default functionality that we're stating in the extension which is really awesome so now if we do that to each of these and we go ahead and print it we can say we can see each of them are calling the same method where it's all the same um, functionality changing to white now this is where you can go back and it's kind of like inheritance where you can kind of like override but it's not actually overriding um, you can give it its own functionality for that specific method so what we can do is we can once again put my or once again put change color in here and we can add default functionality so let's say for buttons we want to um, change the background to black so changing to black and then my label we want default functionality to be um, changing it to red let's say so now we have both of those um, with different implementations and my view with the default implementation that we specified back here in our color changeable extension. And if we run that one more time, we get the specified implementation of each of those methods. Now where this gets really, really fun is when you start creating even more protocols and even more extensions and you start giving all of these different objects default, um, default functionality and um, that's really usable and um, it makes it very scalable for your, for your uh, code. So if we wanted to have a new protocol where we say text clearable, like the text for whatever that object is, is gonna clear out if we do this method, then we can add that. So let's go ahead and go through that practice right now. All right, so as you can see, I made a new protocol called text clearable. Now um, we're only gonna add this to the objects that it actually makes sense to add. So now um, a, a button usually has text, it has the title, right? So we can add text clearable to that. And then a label obviously has text, so let's go ahead and add um, text clearable to that. And it wouldn't make sense to add it to my view. We technically could if we wanted to, but you know, being a human, we're not gonna do that. So as you can see down here, now my button my button has the two, it has two methods. Well, it's showing three, I'm not really sure why, but it has two methods showing um, change color and te uh, clear text. So we can just do clear text. My label can do the same exact thing, my label dot clear text. Now, if we go ahead and print that out, we're gonna see changing color, you know, black and then clearing text. And then once again, changing to red, clearing text, and then changing to white, right? And and it and this is infinitely scalable 
um, changing the protocols and everything like that. So if we wanted to um, go to our label and say, well, we don't want the default implementation of clear text for whatever reason, then um, we're only clearing last last letter or something. Right now we have default. We have um, you know explicit functionality for our label where when we hit clear text it's not going to do the default functionality which would be clearing the text it's just going to clear last letter so um, as you can see very helpful all you have to do is just you know add it to um, each of those class each of the objects that you want the protocol to conform to or um, yeah each of the um, protocols that you want that class to conform to or that struct to conform to and it automatically gets that default functionality now there's one last thing that I want to show you and that's actually um, combining multiple protocols into just one um, one protocol name and um, also how you can add those protocols to um, an object without leaving them up here where you're actually defining the class all right, so as you can see right here, we have a new protocol called color and text updatable. And I didn't put any additional um, property properties or methods in there. It's just those two combined into one protocol. So now instead of having color changeable and text clearable for the button, we can just say color and text updatable color and text updatable and then everything will still work as expected so if we go ahead and run you can see all the the things that were being printed out before are still being printed out now um, if we didn't want to put color and text um, color and text uh, updatable right here where we're defining our class we can do it in an extension for our actual uh, object so instead of putting it right here we can delete this and we can say extension on our label, my label, and we say color and text updatable. And then we just open and close the brackets because we're not going to put any functionality. Now, it makes more sense if you actually put um, the, the updated functionality, if you're taking the default more in here. Like it would make more sense to put it in the extension right here, but you don't have to. You don't have to, you can do it however you want, whatever makes sense to your code. But that's pretty much it guys. So I hope that kind of gives you uh, a little bit of a look into how and why protocol extensions are so powerful and why you should definitely be using them in your code because it allows you to get that type of inheritance type um, behavior with using structs and you know you definitely want to use structs as much as possible because then you don't have things like retain cycles and um you know uh, hitting uh you know null pointers and things like that so it will definitely help you out a lot so i highly recommend that you use protocol extensions very very powerful i love them i love them all right guys it's been your boy Kilo Loco. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or any recommendations on videos that I should cover, make sure you drop them, um, drop them in the comments below so I know. If you are interested in reaching out to me and actually talking about like a bug that you have in your project or any like code related questions or anything or just want to talk, hit me up on Twitter. That's probably the best place to reach me and the quickest place I'll respond to you. And if you're interested in just like day-to-day -day stuff that I'm doing with my life, then you could um, check me out on Instagram. So I hope that you like the video. Um, make sure you subscribe if you want more content, putting out all kinds of great content this year, um, planning on stepping up my game. And um, I hope you guys like it. So keep coding passionately.